Hey guys, welcome to part 2 of my video responding to Screen Rant article about 20 things wrong with Sam Winchester. So I already did the first 10 in my part 1 video a few days ago. Um, a lot of things doesn't really make sense in the article, if not all of them. So some of them I would agree with, uh, I would say the majority I don't agree with. But overall the articles, titles, the things we ignore about Sam Winchester that are wrong doesn't really make sense to me. But Anyway, let's jump straight to number 10 where we stopped last time. I'm not going to say much about this uh, point, his time at college. Basically, he's saying that it doesn't make sense for Sam. He only spent two years in Stanford, apparently. And uh, he's already in law school or looking into law school. And he's saying that he has to be a senior in college, not just spend two years to be looking into law school, which, you know, I didn't really grow up here in the US. So where I come from, it's a little bit different. So. I just really don't know how the system works here as far as education and if that makes sense on the show. So, I don't know, I'm gonna leave this one to you guys, the link to the article will be down below. Not even sure if this is a valid point for Sam to be looking into law school after two years of being in Stafford or whatever, so I'm gonna leave this one to you guys, I'm not sure about it. Alright, let's look at number 9, his long flowing hair. So again, another silly point, this whole, I'm not gonna read the whole thing just in an interest of not wasting time, but they're talking about how Sam never has a hair routine showing on the screen and he's always sleeping in the car with Dean or whatever. Later he's sleeping in the bunker, so this doesn't make sense. So they're saying that how is his hair is so perfect, oh my god, so perfect, but he's not, you know, he's always on the road, whatever, hunting, how is it so perfect, Dean makes sense, Sam doesn't make sense. So again, a super silly point, doesn't even deserve time to debunk whatever, so I'm gonna leave this point to you guys, his long flowing hair, it's just useless point really. Alright, let's move on to number 8, he's the only Winchester who hasn't made a deal with a demon. Alright, let's read this one out. Here's another strange way that Sam is the odd man out in his family. Everyone in it has made a successful deal with a demon but him. This fits with Sam's image as a goody two shoes of the family, but it's honestly strange that his whole family except him have made deals with the devil when Sam is his perfect vessel. Well, they don't really make a deal with the devil. They're, uh, they make deals with demons. That's not the same thing as the devil. They seem to be confusing normal demons with the devil. It's not the same thing, Screen Rant. Alright, let's see what else he's saying. By the way, Sam did make a successful deal with the devil, literally, Lucifer, uh, in the episode... In season 13, when Lucifer resurrected Sam, basically forced a deal on him, either die again, or, you know, do what he wants, tell Jack that Lucifer saved him. So this happened at, uh, towards the end of season 13, so actually this whole point doesn't make any sense, but let's continue anyway. Both of Sam's parents made deals with Azazel, the yellow-eyed demon that fed Sam his blood. Dean made a deal with Crossroads Demon. These were by and large to try and save their own family. A time-honored Winchester tradition. Sam himself has done this a few times, but has somehow avoided needing to make a deal with a demon. If everyone else in the family needed to at some point, why didn't Sam? Well, Sam tried to make deals with demons a few times. Uh, to save Dean or whatever when he went to hell, but it just never worked out, so he just killed the demons. And he tried to somehow torture a demon into finding Dean in season 10. It wasn't really a deal, it was just like tor torturing a demon for information pretty much. But that didn't work, so he killed the demon, same thing. Yeah, so again, the point is really... <laughs> really, really weak point, doesn't make any sense. And he did make a deal with the ultimate devil, who's an archangel, I know, but... They did mention that... Everyone made a deal with the devil except Sam. Not really, it's just Sam who made a deal with the devil, if anything. From what I remember, anyway. Alright, moving on to number 7. He was stronger than Lucifer. Um, okay, we choose to ignore that. No, he wasn't really stronger, he just managed to break free, but okay. Perhaps the biggest climax of any season of Supernatural was the fifth season finale, when Sam and Dean struggled to avoid their destiny as the vessels of Lucifer and Michael, two archangels. The culminating moment came when Sam overpowered Lucifer's control of his body, long enough to send Lucifer, Michael, Sam and Adam into Lucifer's cage. This made for a great moment to end the season and possibly the series, yeah it was the original ending of the series but it chose to continue. But as the lore around Archangels continued to be fleshed out in later years, it eventually became clear that it made no sense. Lucifer is one of the most powerful entities in the universe, and no other human has come close to resisting him the way Sam did. While it would have been fine if the show had ended soon after, it stands as convenient break 
in the show's world building. Uh, I don't think that really does make sense that Sam overpowered Lucifer in season 5 finale because it was kind of like a power of love cliche, power of family. Sam saw the little army man, the reflection thing in the mirror of inside baby. And you know, he remembered his childhood memories with Dean and uh, just broke him out of Lucifer's control for a moment. Just long enough for him to like power through and pull him to the cage and he took Adam with him and all of that slash Michael. So it's not like, you know, Sam beat Lucifer and just he declared more stronger than Lucifer. It's more like he went a battle with Lucifer and not like a whole war. And that's all he needed, this like few moments in this battle, this one battle, to take Lucifer to the cage. So I wouldn't say it's unbelievable. I would say really it's like, like any other cliche in movies or TV shows, the power of love, whatever, beat Lucifer pretty much. So yeah, I would... I wouldn't say this doesn't make sense. I would say it makes perfect sense as far as him, uh, his memory getting jogged and him being Lucifer's ultimate vessel. He drank like a whole, you know, barrel of demon blood right before that. So he's really strong to more stronger than any human. It wasn't like a normal human, right? So I think it just made sense to show. So yeah, I don't agree with that point. All right, moving on to point number six. Dean is a better hunter. Do we ignore that? Do we not ignore that? Doesn't matter. No. But let's see what they say about it. There have already been plenty of debates about the subject that bring up Sam's great technological aptitude or intelligence, but we're going to boil this down to the simplest of criteria, results. Dean Winchester has destroyed more monsters than Sam, and he has destroyed more powerful entities than Sam, sure. Dean almost always gets to strike the final blow against the major antagonist, <laughs> that's sure, of the show. That's definitely kind of true, actually. Usually, while Sam has been knocked out, Again, true, Sam gets knocked out very often. I mean, I'll give him that. With the mark of Cain and all of the other crazy things that turned him into a fighting machine, Dean spent several seasons as one of the most powerful beings in the entire universe when he was Michael, Dykel too in the, finals, in the last season. <coughs> Sam, meanwhile, is a pretty average hunter when he isn't powered up by demon blood. Come on, that's not fair. He's not an average hunter. He's still one of the best hunters. Make whatever arguments you want, but when you look at the scoreboard, the better hunter is clear. Sure. Alright, I'll give him that. There's not much arguing here. Dean always kills the big beds, the most big beds, the strongest big beds out of everyone. I wouldn't say Sam is an average hunter, though. That's really harsh. So, I mean, I would give him that Dean is a better hunter, but doesn't really make s we don't really ignore it. We don't care. We only care about the brothers being family. It's not like a competition, right? No one cares. So, um... Uh, Fine, I'll give him that point. Dean is a strong, stronger hunter, whatever. Alright, number five. He recovered from the cage way too fast. Um, let's see what exactly does he mean by that. A problem that all long-running television series face is that characters facing the same issues for multiple seasons gets boring eventually. So they always have to find a way to get past their personal demons. That makes sense for most characters, but most characters don't have to deal with the trauma of being tormented by the devil for years. Sure, got over it fairly quickly, I would say. Sam was trapped in a cage in hell with two archangels for an unspecified amount of time. Well, it's really a long time. It was like uh, hell's time, whatever. During which times he hurt them relentlessly. This basically broke Sam in half, but his struggles after only lasted for a season or two. In the more modern seasons, Sam isn't even bothered by his memories of Lucifer himself tormenting him. Fine, I'll give him that. But that's not just Sam, it's also Dean with his memories of hell. I understand the only focus on Sam was this list, but you could say the same about Dean with like his hell memories and stuff. Which I'm sure you would have said it in Dean's article. Because we also have an article about Dean about that. But yeah, I'll give him that point. Sam recovered too quickly, sure. Alright, number four, soulless Sam, what about him? When Sam first came back from Lucifer's cage, it was immediately apparent that something was very wrong with him. It was eventually revealed that Sam did not have his soul, only his mind and body had made it out of hell. This led to a quest where Dean tried to find Sam's soul, whatever the cost. The problem here was that body and soul separation hadn't really been a thing on Supernatural before this, and no other character has separated from their souls the way Sam did. It worked on a narrative level, but it led to the writers breaking some of their own rules for the world. What rules? Plus, the idea that a human could exist as a mind without a, its soul wasn't one that they ever really explored again. Are you serious, Donatello? In the recent seasons? I mean, how old is this article, to be fair to it? 
might have been before the Donatello thing happened. Let's see. December 2018? Yeah, I'm pretty sure Donatello thing happened by then because it happened in season 11, right? Yeah, come on, guys. They totally missed this one. So yeah, Donatello had the soul thing, and uh, what are they complaining about? There are, they, they claim that the writers broke the show's rules with this? What rules? This was the first time this happened, as far as I remember. Sam losing his soul was the first of its kind, so they would have no rules for that event, right? So technically they didn't break any rules before that happened in the show, so... This point doesn't make any sense. And then at the end they say, Plus the idea that a human could exist as a mind without its soul wasn't one that they ever really explored again. Again, that is wrong because they explored it with Donatello later, which this article should know, based on the date of the article, so... This point doesn't make any sense at all. Alright, moving on to number three. He doesn't have any friends of his own. Well, let's go through and see what they say about that. You know how some couples have friends, but when they break up, it becomes clear that they were only friends with one person in the couple? That's kind of what it's like for Sam and Dean Winchester. Most of Winchester's friends perish, <laughs> that's true, and the ones they do have, like Estelle, are always closer to Dean than Sam, so what? Kez got closer to Sam in the recent season, at least. The show implies that Sam had a social life in college before becoming a hunter. All of his friends were, like, Azazel Pond, so what do you want? But Sam obviously hasn't talked to any of those friends in years at this point. He talked to some in season 1, but not much after that, sure, whatever. This leaves Sam in an awkward position, as he's the one between the two brothers most likely to leave the hunting world behind. Well, I don't think he will, so... Is he most likely? Not anymore, again. You talked about a point similar to this earlier, and I debunked it, so... No, Sam is not, it's not likely to leave the boys at all, like the, the double of the hunters. None of them are. How is he going to live a normal life when he seems to have zero friends? Well, what's Dean's friends? When he leaves a li if he leaves a life. Does Dean... Benny? Benny's back in purgatory. Does he have any other great friends outside of Sam and Cass? Not, not that I can think of. No. So, is this really a point to complain about? Not really. All his college friends were like Azazel Pawns, except some of them where he met in season 1. Like the girl in the Skinwalker episode and he just talked to her and left. Because they don't want to get too close to their friends, even if they had old friends, the boys don't want to get close to them. Because as you said in this point, their friends perish, so... That's why it doesn't make sense for them to get back to their friends, even if they had good friends, either of them. So yeah, this point does not make sense, I don't agree with it. Number two, he likes 80s hair metal. Okay, that's a complaint. The Vince Vincenti experiment was mostly a failure. The best known aspect of this was Rick Springfield's performance as Lucifer, which just didn't have the resonance of Mark Pellegrino's turn, sure. A forgotten aspect was that it made it canon that Sam Winchester liked Vince Vincentin's genre of music, 80s hair metal. The vast majority of Supernatural is built on more of a classic rock aesthetic, usually demonstrated by Sam's brother Dean. Thus, Sam doesn't just have the problem of having surprising taste in music, he is also the odd man out on the show. The show bases most of its look and atmosphere in the 70s, so Sam made the wrong choice. It's his choice. What do you mean he made the wrong choice? Does he have to fit in with what Dean likes or what the show looks like or built on? No. He's his own person. He has his own choices, free will, except when God builds their lives and all of that. Other than that, he's free to like whatever he wants. At that point, is pointless. So, obviously, disagree with this one. All right, finally, we got to number one. He was supposed to be the main character. Okay... If you can remember all the way back in the beginning of the show, you remember that Sam was portrayed as the main character of the show, he got the lion's share of character arcs and dialogue, not to mention becoming a demonic wonder kid who could see the future, yeah, and slowly the focus of the series shifted over to Dean Winchester, who seemed to embody more of what the show was about, all of a sudden he was getting more choices and chances to shine, nobody would argue that in the later seasons, Dean is the central protagonist of Supernatural, but in the beginning, it was supposed to be Sam. Well, 
I really don't think so. I think they both are equally center and important to the plot. Dean might get more storylines than later seasons, but again, Sam had a big storyline with Closing the Gates of Hell in season 8. So that was all Sam. That was really powerful. Even in a later season, in season 14, in the most recent season, Dean had the whole Michael position thing, sure. But Sam actually, Jared had the lion's share of powerful scenes, like I Believe in Us scene. He's the one who stood out, not Jason in that scene, not Dean, it was Sam. And in the finale, when he confronted God about like leaving them and all of that, Sam was shining in that scene too. Sam shot God in the final, in the season finale. Obviously, it didn't do much, but he stood up to God in that finale. And uh, he really, he's the one who shined the most in like a couple of episodes this season at least. I believe in us, and in the finale, it was all Sam, all Jared. So, don't really think uh, it's all about Dean in the recent seasons. I disagree with that. He might have a little bit more focus as far as storylines, but... To be fair, Castiel, Crowley, and other characters have stolen the focus of both boys in the most recent season in general, which I really don't like, and I always talked about that. So it's not a Sam and Dean problem, it's a writer's problem, writing things that are not really relevant to the boys. I don't think Dean really stole too much of a spotlight of Sam. I always see him as equal, honestly. I might have my own preference, I prefer Dean, that's just my own personal preference, but never really noticed that Dean is taking like most of the storylines over Sam. Uh, like in the examples I gave, uh, Sam had a lot of moments to shine in the recent seasons over Dean. So I disagree with this point. Um, it doesn't make sense to me. I disagree with it. Alright, so that was it, guys. Uh, finished the whole article. Did the first 10 points in part 1. Uh, the remainder of the 10 points in part 2. Uh, overall, I disagree with most of the points, most of the 20 points. 20 things wrong with Sam Winchester that fans ignore. I didn't ignore any of the things they mentioned, and all of them are wrong anyway. So, again, let me know down below in the comments what you think. Do you, do you disagree with their points? How many of their 20 points? I'm gonna leave a link to the article down below in the comments. Um, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Subscribe for more awesome supernatural content. Till next time, as always, no chick flick moments. Awesome. That's awesome. You're awesome.